in today's video I wanted to talk about the first time setup of Plex. Uh, so Plex Media Server, for anybody that doesn't know, is a really cool way to view all of the media that you've got stored on your NAS, whether it's movies, TV shows, your personal media, uh, music. Um, you can do it all within Plex and it does a lot of the uh, legwork for you in terms of going off and getting the rich content um, that lets you uh, go through and view um, um, browse the different items that you have, information about the items that you have. Um, so in today's example, I'm going to show you the, uh, the setup on a uh, brand new NAS um, that's uh, only just had Plex installed. So I do have Plex installed. Um, now there are a couple of ways to go about installing Plex. Um, I guess the simplest way would be to go into our App Center um, and going down to the Entertainment category and choosing to click the install button next to Plex Media Server. Um, unfortunately, when you do this, it does install a little bit of an older version. Uh, Plex uh, release a new version of their software um, on a weekly basis usually. Um, so as they come out with new versions, um, we only get a few new versions a year in the App Center. Whereas if you want the very latest version, you can go get it from Plex themselves in a ready to install QNAP package. Um, so one of the first steps that I personally do um, is once I've got my NAS all set up, um, when I want to install Plex, I will go to plex.tv. Um, when you log in there um, with your own account details, um, I do have an account with a Plex Pass, um, but um, even if you don't have a Plex Pass, you can do the same thing. Um, so you come across to the download section and you get a few choices. Uh, we want Plex Media Server at the top right. So I'm going to click on Plex Media Server. Um, now, as I'm on a Mac, it's automatically assumed I want it for a Mac, but there is a drop down here as well, as well as a Plex Pass downloads option that's on. Um, as I said, because I do have a Plex Pass, it's going to give me the latest versions for Plex Pass users. Um, if you don't, um, you, you'll get some older versions of the software. Um, but here I'm going to click the drop down and I'm going to go down to the NAS for QNAP. Um, so here you've got Plex Media Server for QNAP and you can choose the package. Now because we do NAS with different architectures, um, it gives you four different choices here. So the top one is the one I need for the NAS I'm using, which is a uh, TS-464. Um, but if you're using any of the other NAS, um, there's some different options there to try and guide you to the correct version uh, for your different NAS. Um, but you would simply click on that and it will give you something called a Q package, a QPKG. Uh, once you've got that Q package, you can come back to the NAS, go to the App Center, and you can click this uh, plus button at the top that lets you install the package manually, and you can browse to that on your local machine and then click Install. Um, so that's the only step I've done differently from, I guess, the easiest method of just using the App Center is I did install um, the absolute latest version from the Plex.tv website with a, with a little manual process of downloading it first and then coming back to my QNAP to install it. Now, before we open up Plex, uh, I also have done some other things to prepare for Plex so that when I open up Plex and it runs the setup wizard, um, I'm ready for all the questions it's going to ask. So one of the questions it will ask is, uh, where is your media um, on the NAS? Uh, so what I've done is I've gone into the uh, control panel. I went to shared folders and I created a shared folder. And in my case, I called it media. Um, so with this media share, what I've already done, if I look in file station, um, so within this media share, I created a folder called movies. Now, if you've got things like TV shows, you maybe create a folder called TV. Uh, if you've got some of your own, own personal uh, video collection, um, home movies, um, pictures, things like that, you can create different folders. So the idea here is that you would create um, a different folder for each media type that you have, such as movies, TVs, pictures, music, things like that. Um, you would want them all in separate folders. Um, so in this case with movies, when I go inside movies, I've put in uh, just a few movie trailers I downloaded. Uh, so here's uh, five different movies. And these are the ones that we're going to see once I've gone through the wizard in Plex. These are the ones it should discover and find. Um, so what I've done is I've just named them correctly. So I've basically named them the movie name as well as I put the year in it. The year's not so important on some movies, um, but for example, if you have a movie called um, The Italian Job, I'm sure everybody knows it. If you just call it The Italian Job, well, it could pick either the new one with Mark Wahlberg in it, um, or it could pick the much better one um, with Michael Caine in it. Um, but you'd have to either choose 
um, you know, you'd have to write the Italian job um, 1969 to make sure you get the correct one from um, Michael Caine. Uh, so it depends on the, uh, the the movie, whether or not it has been remade or not, as to whether there's an ambiguity in the title. Um, but Plex will generally pick the most popular choice, um, which is often the most uh, the newest version of the of the item. Um, so if you want to have um, them rated correctly, I typically put the uh, the year in the movie title as well. Um, so with these uh, movie trailers I've got here, these are the ones I'm going to find. If you had TV shows, you would simply come across here, maybe go uh, new folder for TV. Um, now within the um, TV folder, you know, it doesn't matter what the TV is called. So each, each TV show that I would have, I would create here. So for example, if I was to create a, a new folder for a really cool TV show called The Boys, I would put that there. Maybe I had another TV show as well. So I'll click new folder here. So something like, um, let's say friends, you would put that there. Um, so each TV show will get its own um, uh, folder, if you like. Now within these, because they're multi-season shows, so if I was to go into the boys, um, my next folder I would probably do would be season 01. And then if you've got uh, multiple seasons of it, you can go season 02. So you can create multiple um, items and then within each of these you would put the um, the actual files of the TV show as well. Um, this helps Plex uh, create separation so that you can sort um, uh, the TV show item by different, um, uh, different seasons if you want to look at it that way as well. Um, so these are just some steps that I would do ahead of time. Uh, for this example I'm just going to do the movies one uh, just to show you how that works. Um, so in this movies folder I've got Nothing in there with, to do with movie posters, who's in those movies, um, what genre they are, what rating they have. I literally just have the movie file named correctly. Um, you can see they're all pretty small. These are, these are just trailers that I'm using here. Um, so that's all I've done ahead of time. And I put them in, them in a folder called Media and then a subfolder called Movies. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Plex Media Server icon on the desktop of the QNAP here. Um, and that should open up a new web browser window. Um, first question it's going to ask is Plex would like to sign into your Plex account. So because this browser knows about my Plex account, I've already logged into Plex.tv with it. Um, it already knows my account name, so that's just my QNAP email address. Um, I'm going to say yes, you can sign in with that one. So it's going to sign in and effectively claim this Plex media server um, to uh, my Craig Reed at uh, QNAP.com uh, Plex account. Um, so that's just going to link those in the background. Uh, sometimes when you do that, it does say spinning for a long time. Um, you can sometimes speed it up just by sort of quitting out of this, going back in and starting it again. We'll give it a second to see if that's going to work. So let's try that and just come back to Plex Media Server. There we go. Uh, sometimes Plex does do that on the uh, very initial setup. Uh, so here we've got how Plex works, just a bit of information about what's happening. But if essentially this got it is going to start the wizard to get you set up. So we'll say, what do you want to call it? Um, I'm happy to just leave it the NAS name, but here you might want to call it something like Homeplex, Home Media, something like that. Um, so you've got an option here to allow me to access the media outside my home. I'm going to untick that. Um, but if you do have, um, uh, if you do want remote access to your Plex, you can leave that ticked. Again, you can go and change that setting later on if you want to as well. Um, so there's TS-464, that's what I'm gonna call my server. That's fine, so I'm gonna click next. Um, so we're going to go through basically each of these categories. So the name of the server, we're going to then do the media library setup, um, and then we're going to finish the setup. So we'll just wait for it to uh, register the name of the server there, and then we'll get onto the media library. There we go. Uh, so sync your watch state and ratings. So this is if you've got um, um, multiple Plex media servers, anything like that, uh, you can choose to do the syncing uh, between servers as well. If you want, you can link your servers. Uh, I'm just gonna say no to that for now. Uh, so here is the media library. So you can just click next here without adding any media libraries. Um, I personally like to get it done during the wizard. So I'm gonna say add a library. Um, so it's asking, what is the library? So this is what content you have. This is so Plex knows um, what uh, databases it's going to go search uh, for the files that it finds. Uh, so if I go here, I'm going to say films, so movies. Um, so you can leave it called films. You can change it to movies if you like. I probably will because that's how I've named my folder. Uh, so we'll say the name of this folder is movies. The language of the items in there is English for me. Uh, so that's what I'm going to leave it going to click down to the add folders section and now you have to browse for your media folder. 
Um, so for anybody using a, a, a QNAP, um, you know, looking through this list, you, you might not see your media folder immediately. Um, so anybody using a QTS as the operating system on their QNAP, um, they're in this cache dev one data folder. So you click on that and you'll see all your shared folders. So here I'm going to select media and I can see that movies folder we had. And in, in gray there, I can see the uh, different files I have. Um, with uh, QUTS Hero, it's slightly different. It'll be in a folder called uh, ZFS uh, underscore data with a number somewhere. Um, you have to click each of the ZFS underscore data folders um, until you see it. Um, I can't tell you which one it will be because it depends on the order you created your shares on your NAS. Um, if it was the fifth share created, it might be something like ZFS data 35. Um, whereas if it was the first share, it might be ZFS data 30, something like that. So just click through the different ZFS data ones till you find your media folder. It'll be obvious when you click on it, it'll look familiar. Um, so here I'm going to say that's absolutely fine, media and movies. So I'm going to say add that as my path and I can just verify that that's where it is. That's, that's good for me. Now you can just add it here or you can click on to advanced and just choose some extra options so you can have things like cinema trailers enabled you can have the certification country so you know what the ratings are of the the item so i can change that to uk specifically because that's where i where i live um, you can have different options for titles um, metadata if you've got your own metadata your own things like tags and items you can choose that um, you've got different trailer options um, you can choose to have um, uh, subtitles um, um, included a standard um, and where you get the ratings from. So I like IMDb's ratings more than Rotten Tomatoes, for example, so I can change that. Um, and you can go through and change all these different options. And you can change all these later. These aren't all fixed forever. You can go and change these at any time. Uh, so I'm going to add that library. I'm happy with that one. Now I could add another one. So if I wanted to add the TV shows, for example, I can say TV shows, go to the folders, add the TV show folders. Again, cache dev one data go down to the TV and click add. I'm not gonna add the TV because I don't have any content in those, uh, but that's how you would add multiple different ones um, at the same time here. Uh, so I'm gonna click next there. Uh, it's just finishing letting you know you can go get the Plex apps uh, for iPads and other device, anything Android or iOS basically. Um, so you can go get those. So I'm gonna click done. <clears throat> so now it's asking what you want your pin sources to be. So these are what's gonna be in the menu on your left hand side. Um, now, I'm not really going to muddy the waters here with all the different options, um, so I'm probably going to just untick all of them except the movies one that I just created at the top. So I'm going to leave all those other ones empty. Uh, you can, of course, pick and choose as you wish what you want for those to be. So I'm going to say finish setup. Um, if you do have different streaming services, you can choose those here. Again, I'm just going to keep it simple, keep it clean. Um, so here it's now found um, those five movies that I had listed before. So if we go back to the NAS, uh, we can go back to the file station option here and we can go and look in that movies folder and we can see those same five movies there have been added here. Now nothing extra has been put in the folder there, it's all stored in the Plex folder somewhere else. Um, but all this information has now come for the movies. So if I was to click onto the uh, uh, Tom Cruise Top Gun Maverick movie here, so I click in there, it's got all the faces of all the people in the movie. Um, it's got who directed it. Um, the IMDb rating is there, uh, tells you how long the film is, um, but really how long the film is, is about the only information um, that's actually pulled from the um, file that you have. So you can see that that says only 28 seconds because it's just a small trailer that I've got. Um, as you scroll down, you can see some different extras that you can go to, even different trailers. Um, you can get the music directly from here as well if you want to listen to the music. Uh, but any of these films, if you had multiple films uh, with these actors in, you know, if you was to click the face of, say, Tom Cruise, it would show you all the films you have with Tom Cruise there. So I've just got a few select trailers here, so um, nothing to show there. But you can go through all these different options and see lots of different, um, different items. If I was to click on, say, the Thor one, we can see all the same information. It's obviously updated all the faces. They're all very different now. Um, you've got some text you can read about it. But I've done none of this apart from naming the file correctly and telling Plex that this file um, is in a folder for movies. That's all I did. Plex has done the rest of it for me. Um, now, there are some settings that you can do within Plex. Um, so when you click play, for example, um, playing the movie um, is going to be fine for most people directly if they're playing it on a computer. But if you were playing it on a... Uh, older TV, perhaps you were playing it remotely, um, you might need to do something called transcoding. 
Uh, transcoding within Plex is where it takes your original source file and Plex will change it to something um, either a lower resolution, lower bit rate, something like that. It will change it on the fly in real time um, to be something different that is more compatible with the situation you're trying to watch. Either compatibility for the device you're playing it on um, or for the connection speed that you have. So if I click the uh, the settings option up here at the, uh, the top of uh, Plex, it's going to take me to a few different sections. Now you've got a top section here, which is sort of managing um, the account and um, the Plex web experience that I'm in now. And then everything below where it says TS-464, which is the name of the Plex server you created. Uh, this is specific uh, to this server. Um, so you've got different things like dashboards, general, remote access. So there's a red uh, thing next to remote access because I don't have it enabled. Um, you can set your uh, internet upload speed. So this is uh, how it will know to limit streams to a certain bandwidth if they're remote users. Uh, but you do also have the transcoder option down here. Um, so this is only available if you do have a Plex Pass. You can't use hardware transcoding um, without it. Um, now this NAS, the TS-464, uh, it does have onboard graphics with the Intel uh, processor that we're using. Uh, so for this one, Plex can take advantage of using the, the graphics card, the GPU, to do the transcoding. Um, so you've got the uh, option to tick that there. Uh, so that's not going to use any CPU power whatsoever from the NAS to do the transcode. It's going to use all the GPU power to do it. So if you're using your NAS for other things like running virtual machines or other tasks, um, it's not going to slow those down if a transcode has to happen. So you can choose those and you can set the transco transcoder quality to different settings as well. So you can have it set to automatic. Um, I leave it on automatic usually, but when you've got hardware acceleration um, enabled, um, it's going to use the GPU rather than the CPU to do the transcodes. Um, so then you've got lots of different options for DLNA. So you can enable DLNA if you want to use this on, say, an older smart TV that doesn't have the Plex app itself. Um, you can use um, Plex to stream to um, older TVs that aren't running Plex or so different clients that aren't running Plex as well if you want to. Um, so down here, you've got options for your library. So you can see the library that we added earlier. So I can see there's the movies one. I can edit that library, change any of those settings that I set. Um, if you've got TV tuners or things like that, you can do that down in the live TV and DVR sections. So you can add a TV tuner into Plex as well, uh, where it can record live TV for you if you want to. And you see a TV guide, things like that. Um, but really, you're up and running with Plex there. Um, really, one of the only settings I like to change in Plex is down here in the library section. It says here, scan my library automatically and periodically. Um, I generally have it set to scan my library automatically. And once I tick that box, I go save changes. This means anytime you put a new file in that movies folder, Plex will immediately add it into its list. It's going to notice that you've changed the structure of the library and it's going to add that file. You don't have to go and run a manual scan later. Um, if you did want to run a, a manual scan, you can come here to your movies folder and click the three dots and you can say scan library files. Plex will go off and scan it. And if there was anything new added, it will just add them into the list. Um, so that's really getting up and running with Plex. Um, so you know we can try playing something here. So I'll just click play, hopefully be muted. Um, but Plexi just plays it absolutely straight away. Very easy, very quick, um, very simple to do. Um, so all I really did there when I was setting up Plex was just name some files correctly, put the directory structure how Plex likes to have it. Um, there are multiple ways. The way I've showed you is what works for me. Uh, there are multiple ways. Plex have whole articles on there. Um, there are forums that show you different ways to, to structure things like especially the TV shows. Um, but that's how I've got mine, uh, mine set up here. So here with, with Plex, um, that's really the first time set up, full setup um, with a Plex Pass. Again, if you don't have a Plex Pass, you'll just get all the versions of the software and you might have some of the features missing. Um, but you still get a pretty good full featured experience of, of Plex, um, even if you don't have a Plex Pass. So if you just wanted to try it, you can. Um, and you can even get Plex Passes for, for short periods um, if you just want to try out a Plex Pass, see if you need the features. Um, but yeah, that's that's really easy to do. Um, and uh, once you are playing things, you get a, a nice little dashboard here that you can go view. So we can see a little spike there about a minute ago because we did play something. Um, but if you've got uh, Plex here um, being shared to multiple users, you'll see this being much busier. Um, and you can see the CPU usage even a minute ago when I tried to play that file there. Um, it barely used any of the uh, system power because most of it's going to be coming from the GPU. Um, RAM usage was flat like, but yeah, so you can see all the uh, different information, lots of cool information um, within the Plex uh, dashboard as well. 
So hopefully that covered everything. Um, that's that's really how I have have set up Plex um, for for a lot of years now. That's how I how I go about it. Um, again, you can install the uh, the main Plex uh, Plex app straight from the App Center if you want a, a simpler way to do it, rather than going to Plex's own website to get it. But I find this way um, isn't too much trouble to download the file ahead of time and then install it manually on the NAS. Um, so thanks a lot for watching. Um, if anybody has any questions at all, or if I've done something wrong and you've got a better way to do it, please do tell me down below. I'd like to learn a new, better way to do something. If you've if you've got a different option on uh, some of the things I've done there, um, please let me know as well down below. All right, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.